Yeah, so just to start off with, my name is Mike Hogan. I'm a trainer and teacher trainer. Originally from Ireland, but based in Hamburg now. Uh, we were just discussing that a moment ago. Uh, I put down on the name, I'm still from Dublin. Uh, although I guess a lot of other people put down where they're locally from. So, um, yeah, it's probably something for a different intercultural uh, course in terms of the sense of identity. But what I'd like to do with you today is to talk a little bit about interactive whiteboards. Um, I'm not using that projector, but this one instead for reasons which will become apparent in a few moments. Um, but before we do, has anyone here ever worked with or seen an interactive whiteboard? Yeah? <laughs> seen it. Work, worked with it? No. Okay. I've written on it. Okay, you've written on it. You've written on it. <laughs> Without the interactive bit on it. Okay. Well, basically, they look something like, uh, like this. Yeah. And um, it's something which you can plug into the wall, and it allows you to to project whatever you've got on your computer onto the wall, and then this surface then becomes interactive so you can move things around. Um, a disadvantage of these, or the obvious one, people have been speaking about costs a lot today. How much does it cost? How much is it going to cost me? Anyone have any ideas how much an interactive whiteboard costs? Euros. Yeah, kind of the, the, the cheaper low end ones start maybe around 1600 and they might go up to around 3000 So uh, that automatically makes it diff difficult for a lot of us to be able to use one. I was kind of paying attention to the show of hands earlier on in terms of um, who's, who's a freelancer and who works in a school or for a school, but generally the only people who can afford that type of interactive whiteboard are schools and then schools whose students come mostly to them. So it makes sense to, to have this investment in a classroom which is static and always there. Now, I teach in a lot of different companies, so I'm in a different place every day of the week. Um, judging by the nodding heads, I guess you guys are as well, so you can't be carrying something that size with you um, into every company, plus you don't have the 1,500 euro to spend on it. And this is a terrible shame because interactive whiteboards are a really, really interesting bit of technology to liven up the lessons with your students. They can be motivational, they can, you, can, you can bring the course book out of the page and up onto the board, uh, you can get the students up on the interactive whiteboard working themselves, you can use them uh, if you're doing small group activities and you have early finishers. The question is always what do we do with these people, you can get them up to the board working on it. So there's a lot of really nice things that you can do with an interactive whiteboard. And what I'd like you to show what I'd like to show you today is how you can do all of this in a portable way that you can bring with you in your bag from company to company to company for less than 100 euro. So that's basically it's a it's a DIY version of an interactive whiteboard. Um, this first came about about a year and a half ago. Um, the conference that I think it was Carl made reference to earlier on, the TED conference, uh, there was a developer named Johnny Lee who uh, took one of these things. This is a video game controller from a Nintendo Wii. And he took one of these things and analyzed the software inside it and also worked out that in the front there's a relatively uh, high-powered infrared camera, so it can see infrared movement. And so what I'm going to do now, I might as well, I'll talk you through how I can set this up and how this works as I'm doing it. Um, on the handout, there's a very basic step-by-step -step guide which tells you everything you need in terms of hardware and software and how to set it up. And then I'll show you a few practical applications that you can use in your classrooms if you have online access and also if you don't. Because I know we mentioned earlier on as well, in many cases, you might have access to a computer or to a projector, but you can't get through company firewalls. So things like downloading videos onto your local um, computer is also a useful, a useful thing to do. Okay, so basically, there's a few different bits of hardware necessary. First of all, this thing, is known as a Bluetooth dongle. You may have heard this term before um, relating to mobile phones. If you see people speaking with these things around their ears and their phone is nowhere to be seen, yeah. the thing is communicating to their phone 
the information. And so what I need to get my computer to do, if I have an extra USB port, is to communicate with this thing. Okay. This is a video game controller. It's a Nintendo Wii controller. It's known as a Wiimote. This is all, this is all going to be in a handout. So you don't really need to worry about writing down anything. If you, can, if you can follow me, then that's fantastic. Because I know that this, in the first instance, uh, I find quite difficult to follow as well. So I'm going to go as slow as I can within the time constraints that we're under. Um, so basically, what I need to do is to get my Bluetooth, this little symbol down here, if you can't see it, it's okay. Again, it's all going to be on the handout. There's a little symbol down here that tells me that it's found by a little Bluetooth controller. And I'm going to tell it to look for this thing. So what I need to do now is I need to turn this on by just holding the buttons on. You see the lights start beeping. So this is now shouting out into the room, is there anyone there? And my computer is about to start looking for it. So hopefully it will find it now in a second. And when it does, I can tell them that they're friends with each other and that they can start communicating with each other. Sorry. Okay, so it's found lots of stuff because loads of people have mobile phones and Bluetooth activated. But luckily, this is me here. It's Nintendo. So I am going to tell it. It's already connected with my Nintendo because I did a trial on earlier on. So what I'm doing now is all explained in the step-by-step -step guide. It just tells you that you don't need any code because they like each other, so they don't need a code to get through each other's security. And it's now, it's now installing it so that they really like each other. And then in a moment it's going to say it's found something new. It's found a HID array, which is this thing. So now they're speaking to each other. So what I can do now is start a bit of software, which you can download, um, which will then allow this to see my infrared pen, and I'll be able to turn that wall into an interactive surface. So what I will do now is start my software. It's called Smoothboard. You can download it for $29. This is one of the components of which will all come to around about 100 euro. Is loading up. So now it's looking for this. And it's connecting, and in a moment it's found. Okay, so it's found two of them. So once it's found it, I'm going to launch my program. And my program acts as a kind of an invisible skin which covers everything. So it's now found everything. Now what I need to do is tell the camera in the front where the screen is. And I don't know how or why that just happened. It's cosmic. We'll come back to it. Possibly, possibly because I set this up earlier on to do a trial run. But basically what I need to do, we'll do it here, is I need to tell the camera where the screen is. So if we put this here, there's a little camera in the front. And I'll turn this up a bit. And have a quick look. Again, this is just a question of practice. Once you've done this a few times, you'll have an idea of how far away you need to be from the screen and where it works. And now I'm going to turn this back to my cursor. This has preempted my next move a little bit, but anyway, I'm going to calibrate the screen again. So now the controller is asking me, where's the screen? And I'm going to show it with this. This is an infrared pen. If you push the little button here, an infrared light comes on, which we can't see with our own eyes. But if you do ever want to check, it's working. If you use the, uh, the camera on a mobile phone and shine the light into the camera, you'll see it quite bright. So this is a little tip on how you can check if your batteries are still working. 